So now we're going to verify that this expression is indeed a solution to this differential equation. So remember, we went through all that trouble to derive uh, spherical harmonics so that we would find a solution that satisfies this differential equation, which pops out of the Schrodinger equation after you change your coordinates to spherical coordinates. So I'm just going to check the solution for the case of y23. I know that we also found yll for this problem, but the process is pretty much similar. You just uh, dump, you just take the expression that you've obtained, you substitute everything inside this differential equation, and you check that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So that's pretty much what you what you're doing in this in this section. So I'm just gonna check, verify the answer for y23, and I'll leave yll to yourself. So without further ado, let's verify that this function is indeed a solution to this differential equation. And then first of all, I'm gonna focus on this left-hand side term. So we're going to show that the left-hand side term is equal to this right-hand side term. So in the left-hand side term, first of all, we start off with a, with the derivative of the function y with respect to theta. So that means we're going to start off with differentiating this expression. So some constant times e to the power of 2i phi sine squared theta cosine theta. And then we are going to use the product rule. So what we're going to do is that we're going to differentiate this. So 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So I've used the chain rule and then multiplied by cosine theta. So you get cosine squared theta. And then plus, we now we're going to retain this sine squared term and then uh, differentiate this. So cosine becomes negative sine. So we have negative sine uh, theta to the power of 3. So negative sine theta to the power of 3. So now we've constructed the uh, derivative of the function y with respect to theta, and now we need to multiply it with a sine theta. So multiplying both sides with a sine theta, this is what we're going to get. So we raise this by the power of, uh, we raise this power by one, so we get sine squared, and this becomes sine to the power of four. And now the next step, we need to take this whole expression, and then we need to differentiate it with respect to theta again. So we need to differentiate this whole expression with respect to theta. So now we're differentiating this whole thing with respect to theta. So these terms, they're not related to theta. I can just leave these out. And then now we need to differentiate this term over here. So once again, I'm going to use the product rule. I'm going to differentiate the sine squared. So that becomes 4 sine theta. And then the sine theta becomes a cosine theta. So we get cosine to the power of 3 theta. And then now we do the same thing. This time we retain the sine squared term. And then we differentiate cosine squared. So we get 2 sine squared theta. So the 2 comes down, we, we get a 4. So plus 4 sine squared theta, cosine theta. And then we need to differentiate cosine as well, and that gives us negative sine. So this will give us a negative sine, so this becomes a negative 4. And then when we differentiate cosine, it becomes a negative sine, so we get an extra sine term. So we also need to raise, raise this by a power of 1. So we get sine to the power of 3 theta. And then we differentiate this. This is rather easy, we just use the chain rule. So 4 sine theta uh, to, to the power of 3, and then we use the chain, chain rule cosine theta, because differentiating sine theta is cosine theta. And so this is what we get for this expression. And then now finally, we need to multiply this whole expression by a sine theta. So we attach a sine theta over here. And then what we do is basically we just raise the power by 1 for all the sine terms. So sine squared, sine to the power of 4, sine to the power of 4. And so this is what we get. And then we can simplify this expression slightly by pulling out some terms. You can see that all of these terms, there's a 4 sine squared theta. And then we can also pull out a cosine theta term. So once we do that, this is going to be cosine squared theta. And then once we've pulled out 4 sine squared theta, this all that remains for this term is going to be sine squared theta. And you can see that this term is exactly the same. So this also becomes sine squared theta. So in the end, we have negative 2 sine squared theta. And so this is going to be the left-hand side expression of this differential equation. Uh, this is going to be this expression. So now the next step is to focus on this expression. So now we need to differentiate the function y with respect to phi. And also I should note that uh, before we move on, that we can actually simplify this a bit further, because you can see that this expression here is our y23 theta phi. And you can see that I can combine these terms 
with a sine squared term and a cosine term to give myself y23. So I can now express this whole expression uh, in a way where we have 4 times these terms, cosine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta. And then I'm going to group these terms up together, and then I'm going to write this out as y23 theta phi. So this is so expressing your answer this way is going to be helpful later on. So this expression here is this expression over here. So now continue it on with the left hand side. Now we're going to work with this expression. So the next thing we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to differentiate y with respect to phi two times. And then you can see that if we differentiate y with respect to phi once. Only there's only the only phi term here is this e term, and when you differentiate this, you're going to get two i because of the chain rule. You pull this constant out into the front, and then this whole term itself it doesn't really change, so it stays y two three theta phi. So when you differentiate it once, you're going to get an extra two i in the front, and this term doesn't change. So you're differentiating y y two three, and after you differentiate it, you still retain a, a term that is equal to y two three, and then when you differentiate this whole term again, you get the same thing. So this thing will uh, kind of like output this 2i again. So you get two of these 2i terms, and then the y23 stays the same. Doesn't then nothing uh, changes inside the term. The only thing you get is an extra 2i in the front. You can so you can see that if you differentiate y with respect to phi two times, you're going to get 2i times 2i times the original function itself, and then 2i times 2i that's equal to negative four. So you get four times i squared. I squared is equal to negative one. So you get negative 4, y, 2, 3, theta, 5. And so you can see that now we're ready to construct the expression of uh, this left-hand side expression of the differential equation. So we, you can see that left-hand side is composed of this theta term and this phi term uh, added together. So for this theta term, we found that it is equal to, so the left-hand side is equal to this, uh, this expression that we have over here, 4, cosine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta y 2 3 theta phi and then also we need to add this second derivative of y with respect to phi so we need to add this term over here as well so add negative 4 y 2 3 theta phi and of course we can combine both of these terms so I can just put the 4 in the front and then we will have cosine squared theta minus 1 minus 2 sine squared theta y 2 3 theta phi and then I'm going to express cosine squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta and so you can see that this one will cancel out and then this sine squared term will combine with this one to give me negative 3 sine squared theta so in the end I'm going to get so I have a negative 3 and a 4 so I get negative 12 sine squared theta y 2 3 theta phi and so you see, you see that this expression is the left-hand side expression of the differential equation. And now we can work on the right-hand side ex expression. You can see that we will obtain the exact same thing. So the right-hand side expression, you can see that in this case, uh, our L is equal to 3. So for the right-hand side, you have negative 3 times L plus 1, which is just 3 plus 1, and then times sine squared theta, and then times y. In our case, our y is y23 theta phi. And of course, negative 3 times 4, that's negative 12 sine squared theta y 2 3 theta phi. And so you can see that this expression is exactly equal to this one, which we have obtained uh, as an expression of for the left-hand side. So you can see that the left-hand side is indeed equal to the right-hand side. So we have verified that this function is indeed a solution to this differential equation.